Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Jimmy Dore Show. We have a special guest. It's Sam Tripoli is here. Hey, hey. Sam, how are you? Now, you might know Sam from his very popular podcast called the Tinfoil Hat Podcast. And they're going to have, you have a live show coming up on November 8th, right? November 8th, we got Eddie Bravo, uh, Greg Carl Wood from the Higher Side Chats, and my co-host, Ryan Davis, will be doing a uh, live stand-up followed by a our podcast right after. Oh, I, no, I was on that show at the, when you did it here at the Ice House in Pasadena. I did a comedy set, got a little drunk, and then I went over and I did his podcast, which was fantastic. You I were like, great. I like doing podcasts with a martini in me. <laughs> yeah, you were great, man. That we was were talking conspiracies. Yes, so that's a very, that. it's a very, now you've been, I've known you as a comedian uh, for probably 15 years, yeah. and very hilarious guy, a regular at the comedy store, and uh, you've known him from, you were on, weren't you on a show on TBS with Steve Byrne? I was on a show called, uh, Wild World of Spike on Spike TV and I'm in a movie right now called Dying Laughing. It's a doc on stand-up comedy and there's a whole bunch of docs on stand-up, but this one is amazing. If you ever really want to, it's, man, I, I start crying sometimes when I watch it because the people tell some stories about bombing that are just like, if a, if you're a comic, it really gets to you, man. It's called Dying Laughing. Check it out. It's a wonderful movie. Wow, who who directed that? Who made that? Oh man, you don't know? I, 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 dude, I did, <laughs> I did a lot of drugs back in the day. I don't remember anything. Okay, okay, I remember that. All right, we'll check it out. <laughs> so now you you found the show, and um, I never knew we were politically simpatico until you said you liked the show. Oh yeah, man, you're doing the Lord's work, homeboy. Oh. I really do believe that, man. You you are the great equalizer. When uh, I, I'm in my Facebook battles, you know, and you post something and instantly, oh, it's Politico, it's Fox News, whatever. You post something or it's it's some weird website no one's ever heard of. So, like, I'll post a, a link of something you put out because I feel like you have a lot of street cred. You're you're on the left, and you're but you're real left. You're the, a real leftist. You're not anti-establishment. You're not conformist, and I think that's a big problem, especially in Hollywood. Yeah, there's too much conformity going on right now. Where everybody's too quick to get in line and hoping to get something instead of like, where's the anti-war movement on the left? Where's any of that? Well, that's what I believe in, and that's why I really enjoy your show. So you're an anti-war guy. I'm an anti-war guy. It's amazing how both our parties, there's no even discussion anymore. They're just both pro-war to the point where uh, uh, they just voted in an extra $80 billion a year, $80 billion with a B dollars a year to the war machine. No discussion, no debate. There was no town hall meetings. Ted Cruz and Bernie didn't go debated. Anderson Cooper didn't go to West Virginia. And no, no editorials in any paper. I just did it. And that was enough money, by the way, to send everybody to college for free. And that was enough money to end, wa almost wipe out all the student debt. No debate on it. Remember when John Oliver can assured you that you couldn't do that? We could have had those things, but we don't because we'd rather spend them on bombs that we're dropping in Syria. Where aren't we dropping bombs, right? Afghanistan, 16 years. It's unbelievable. So you're, now, I had always thought that you came from the political right. No, never. No, okay. I've always been anti stab Oh, I've good. always been anti I've always, I love diversity. I, you know, like I travel the world. I've been blessed. I, I flunked first grade. <laughs> and I, the fact that I get paid to travel the world is mind-blowing to me, you know? Yes. So I've been all over the place. I do stamp in China, Australia, all these places, even Canada. You know, it's like, and it's the diversity of, of people go, what do you miss when you leave America? I miss the diversity. Right. I miss, you know, you can jump in a cab and it's an Armenian and he drives you uh -huh. to a nightclub and you're listening to hip hop, black culture, and then you can go get a Mexican food here. And yeah. then, you know, it's like, I love that. This this cultural appropriation thing that's going on is the most ridiculous thing to me. It's all a melting pot. It's all meant to come together. So I've, I've always appreciated that. You know, since I was a kid, I grew up on Motown, man. I've always loved all the flavors of everything. So I always went to the left. I always have been on the left. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. I did I did not know that. That's uh that's fantastic. Anti-establishment all, right. all the time. Yes. Everything I've ever done. You zig, I zag. Not a lot of money in zagging for a long time. There's a little money now. There's for a the little money in zagging now. Yeah, now thank God, is. right? Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, it was a blast to be on your show, so thanks for having me on. Uh it was really funny. A lot of everybody was being hilarious. Um, so everybody check out uh tinfoil hats when I was on it. So fantastic. And um uh, what do you? I, we we were talking about what's happening with Donna Brazil. She just let everybody know 
the entire primary was rigged. And now people on social media today are saying, hey, she's not pregnant, president, move on. And I have to remind people, that's what adult children of alcoholics say. They defend their abuser, and then they, they get, attack the messenger. That's what adult children of alcoholics do. They have misplaced uh, loyalties. That's a hallmark of an adult child of an alcoholic, and that's what's happening. You're loyal to your abuser, and you're outing, you're being angry at the messenger. What is your take on what's happened? If, if I post something that is... Uh, Trump is dumb. Trump is evil. Trump is corrupt. Uh, there, everyone's like, yeah, yeah. Most people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I post that same thing about Hillary or anyone in DC, there's this immediate blowback to that. And it's my opinion is that the whole thing has been the whole movement from the from the very beginning. I mean, not the beginning, but the, like I think this they put this in motion in the '70s is to break down the left, is to break down and get us all to fight with each other and all that stuff I, 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 Hillary, to me you, I always watch a show and you're always talking about how like the DNC's doing you know we're operating wrong we're working wrong I think they're doing this on purpose for me dude you know what the DNC is it's like pro wrestling from the 80s right you remember yeah. when you'd see like the ultimate warrior versus Joe like Joe's gonna lose Joe is always going to lose you knew that that's what I think they're setting up the DNC to be to always lose to get us to always be fighting with each other so why do i post stuff that's anti-hillary not because i want I'm, i hate the dnc i'm a registered democrat i we have to come together i think the only time change happens is when the left forces change and what they're getting at is all of us fighting each other i always talk about this you have you have the woman's march the uh black lives matters march the immigration march the gay marches why does anyone march together I would love that in Los Angeles, mostly because traffic would be great. <laughs> I would be zooming around L.A. like Jack Bauer from 24, get the Malibu in 10 minutes. But imagine if they all walked, marched together. That's the real thing. But they're getting us fighting with each other, so there's no opposition. There was a women's march, and there was 700,000 people here in L.A. and all that stuff. And we went downtown uh, to cover it, right, because we do a news show. And we could, I couldn't help but notice that it was, it was a march about nothing. And imagine if all those people came together to end the war. Imagine if all those people came together to fight for 15. Imagine if all those people came together to break up the banks. Imagine if all those people came together for affordable frickin' housing that no one builds anymore. Imagine, uh, so, but it was people just came together to express their outrage that Donald Trump was rude. <laughs> yeah. That's really all it is. Donald Trump is rude. He's he's uh, he's doing regular Republican stuff. I talked about that before, how people are like, oh, the Supreme Court, that's regular Republican stuff. We've had Rehnquist on the court. We've had a right wing court for decades. It's not a big deal in a sense that it's nothing new. So you have to vote. They said you got to vote for uh, Hillary because of the Supreme Court. That's what? By the way, the Democrats voted for Gorsuch to be nominated 100%. to the Supreme Court. So uh, this whole thing of that, this it's uh, I had the prediction that Trump would pull the uh, the pretty face off the horrible stuff our government's been doing, like selling one hundred billion dollars worth of weapons to Saudi Arabia to go terrorize the Middle East with, which is what they do, exporting Wahhabism, which is terrorism, which is ISIS, which is Al Qaeda, and you know th because of the petrodollar, we're in bed with them. So I lost my train of thought. Well, it's just unbelievable that nobody does this feel like we're entering World War Three. Yes. I don't know what World War Two felt like here, but I, I I'm on my Instagram. I you know, Instagram models aren't affected by World War Three. I don't know what World War. I mean, when I, I went to saw, saw a movie last night, there was a trailer for the Empire for the new Star Wars movie. I'm like, we're the Empire. We really are the empire. We think we're the freedom fighters. Oh. We're the stormtroopers, man. Right. And are. that breaks my heart because we got told that we're trying to bring democracy to people. And little did we know we're doing rich man tricks and we're doing banker wars. And like you can break down why we're going into each one of these. Venezuela? Why are we <laughs> going into Venezuela? Because they want to get off the petrodollar. And I know it's going to wreck our economy. But you know what, man? We are terrorizing the rest of the world. Yes. Yes. Wow, Sam. Very well said. Yes, we are terrorizing the rest of the world. And I, you know, I used to have a joke. Well, how many more Muslims do we have to kill before they get tired of wanting to kill us? <laughs> it's like it does. That's not how you beat them. And you know what's weird is I remember I'm old enough to remember when the 
idea used to be that the United States wanted to export liberty and freedom and democracy to other places. We're going to show you how to do it. But what they really want to do is export crony capitalism. And then people make the mistake. Well, if I have Kentucky Fried Chicken, Taco Bell and McDonald's, I have, I have uh, democracy. No, you have predatory capitalism. You do not have democracy. People make that mistake all the time. But now, not only do we not want to export democracy and liberty, we don't even want to give it to people here in the United States, which is why we have a surveillance state. And they repealed habeas corpus. And now when there was that uh, attacker in New York, Trump says, let's take no rights. He doesn't get a lawyer. He doesn't get his Miranda. John McCain says, let's send him to Guantanamo. That's John McCain saying, take away his rights. In the United States, we're supposed to want to give people rights. That's not the height of our uh, ideals is to take people's civil liberties away. What is what are we so afraid of? Our court system can't handle prosecuting someone who's guilty of sin. Of course we can. But that's just this crazy right wing tendency to take rights away from people. It's the backwards of how America is supposed to be. Right. 100 percent. We just see more and more with this JFK dump about the CIA and what role the FBI and the CIA has in a lot of these events and I don't I know you're a political show I'm a conspiracy show these false flag events and we just see constantly over and over again this I mean the same playbook being played and the same like oh dude we got please we gotta give up our freedoms please enter my house without a warrant please uh, tap my phone please I mean just over take away my guns over and over and over again the same thing these these games that are being played that people just fall for and then you have this astroturfing going on and I think Twitter's one of the worst you have everybody's got a blue check by their name I've never heard of them but they got a, magically got 300,000 people and they can't confirm form quick enough. Yep. They can't give the narrative out quick enough to, you know, uh, anti-gun, anti-this, and I'm for, I'm against gun violence, but I know why we have the right to bear guns. And it's not so I can just shoot random people because sometimes we get to a place where our government isn't playing the right way. So that's its own thing. So we have these people can constantly, constantly playing the game. Like you call that one lady out all the time on MSNBC and she's perfect. She is a, she just she is putting out information. The whole thing is this. Really rich people telling rich people yeah. to convince me, uh, uh, middle, middle income people that poor people are the problem. Ah. That is, I saw that on a meme. I can't, I can't claim it, but it's perfect. And, and it's exactly what the mainstream media is. And all these blue checks that are just astroturfing, <laughs> fake celebrities telling you stuff that people are paying them to tell you. And you're buying it hook, line, and sinker. Wow. Very well said. Very well said. Thank you.